Hi, I'm Kevin O'Sullivan, the Sunday Mirrors TV critic. Well, that's it for another year. No surprises then, as chuckling Christopher Biggins was crowned Queen of the Jungle. This old panto dame was a riot from start to finish, and he's laughed his way into a lasting position in the nation's heart. Superannuated supermodel Janice Dickinson didn't quite have the power to pit Biggins at the post, but you always knew this mesmerizingly mad American would go the distance, and I have a sneaking suspicion she'll be back on British TV before you could sleep with Sly Stallone. Ancient boy bander Jason J. Brown stuck around almost to the end. He was a bit like a bad stain you can't get out of the carpet. He was a game kind of a guy, nice enough bloke, but frankly, I've forgotten him already. But what an amazing series of I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here it was. You can never tell when they gather together the latest crop of C-listers how things will work out. But boy did this year's feuding non-entities deliver the goods. From raging rows to real-life romance, we got the lot. But let's take a look back at some of the astonishing stories that turned this year's Rumble in the Jungle into TV's best-ever reality treat. The jungle can do funny things to your heart, ask Jordan and Peter Andre. This year's celebrity sweethearts were EastEnders relic Mark Bannerman and Welsh songbird Keris Matthews both of whom made a beeline for each other the moment they hit the forest. But just as their fumbling in the jungle was reaching fever pitch, Mark dramatically became the first camper to be voted out, leaving Keris heartbroken and alone. She was even more heartbroken when she got the boot, only to discover that he wasn't there to meet her. Who knows how this bizarre love story will end, but I'll tell you this much, we haven't heard the last of it. The top two jungle losers were apprentice reject Katie Hopkins and fat fashion PR Lynn Franks. Katie simply wasn't famous enough to warrant her inclusion in an otherwise excellent show. I mean, a year ago, she was just another ugly girl in the office. We got rid of her pretty fast, but she should never have been there in the first place. As for mystic loony Lynn Franks, not only was she completely unheard of, she was completely horrible too. She cast a grim shadow wherever she went and I hope never to set eyes on her miserable face ever again. On to John Burton Race and Anna Ryder Richardson, two middle rankers with three names. Michelin starred chef John provided some much needed fire and fury and his raging rows with Lynn delivered some brilliant entertainment. Anna was never more than jungle wallpaper just there to make up the numbers and to be incredibly stupid about Mark and Keris. Speaking of stupid, let's talk about gormless glamour girl Gemma Atkinson, a cracking looker who should never open her mouth, at least not to talk anyway. When they did the intelligence test, she swiftly proved herself to have no intelligence whatsoever. She couldn't even spell the word height without resorting to baby noises. My God, she's scarily thick. Hey, Gemma, you better get back to the lads, Mags, because it's all you're fit for. Hey, it's Rodney Marsh, everyone's favourite sexist. Despite his vile opinions on just about everything, you couldn't help liking this straight-talking former soccer star. Perhaps it's because he really hated Lynn Franks, like the rest of us. Farewell then to the jungle for another year, but don't forget there's still time to join the great I'm a Celeb debate in the forum section of mirror.co.uk where you can also read my brilliant column. My column also appears every week in the Sunday Mirror. Don't miss it.